So as I said in the beginning, we had 30 bucks, we got 30 comic books, and we used two apps. Uh, hung out in there for about four hours, uh, digging through long boxes, just to bring you this video. That's how much I love you. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down, and we're going to do just like a rough cost evaluation between the two apps instead of listing off every single app. If you see something you like in there or something you've been looking for, comment down below. You never know. Now, ultimately, what are we going to do with these comic books that I got? Because obviously I don't collect a lot of this kind of stuff. They'll end up in one of my online auctions. So definitely consider this one and my last 30 for 30 uh, as a preview to the auction. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Uh, first off, we got, you've seen this, Comic Tom 101's been talking about it. It's on the Key Collector app. It's considered the first appearance or cameo appearance of Eddie Brock. Uh, it's literally just his hand. Uh, this is also going for about 2 to $15. Again, my grading scale is from a 2.0 to a 4.9. So at a 4.9, you're looking at $15. Right, so that's about the range for that right there. Um, Key Collector and uh, My Comic Book Shop Price Guide are kind of agreeing on that one. Next is not a popular book. <laughs> uh, I got this one because I mess up too. Um, I glanced down and I read the wrong thing and I ended up picking this up. Although it is a cool cover, there's nothing really Key Collector about it. This comic book ranges between one to five dollars depending on the grade which surprises me because that is an awesome cover <laughs> uh moving on x-men number one this was the best selling comic book of all time reaching over a million copies sold in the united states so they're all over the place um but still a popular comic book, especially if you're a 90s kid. Uh, best selling comic book of all time still it's only around that two to five dollar range uh, let's see here. Captain America, number one. This is a weird buy. I know that Rob Liefeld, uh, it's, it's a hate or love relationship. It's one or the other. There's really nothing in between. But I do know that his fans are extremely loyal to him. Again, another 2 to $5 comic book, depending on where you get it from. More likely, it's just worth a buck. But I figured I'd give it a shot, this one being the variant. Next, this was the probably the super find of the day as far as valuation goes. It's Bat Family or Batman Family. Uh, this is actually uh, surprisingly, depending on grade, goes from four to forty-five dollars, and that was on the Key Collector app. However, my comic book price guide had it two dollars to thirty-five dollars. So we're in the same ballpark, really. But what makes this comic book super interesting, and even on eBay, is that this is the origin of um, Batgirl. Like, you know, yeah, Gordon's daughter. Yeah. So that was super big find. That's probably the biggest find. Well, I don't know yet. You let me know what you think the biggest find is down in the comments down below through all, all these comic books. The next one is Action Comics number 500. Uh, this is the 500th anniversary of Action Comics. I'm checking my notes, and it goes between 2 to $9.00 on key collector other apps will have it from 50 cents to 14 dollars so that was kind of weird uh next one is marvel team up this is spider-man and ghost rider this is their first time meeting up of course this comic book ranges between uh two dollars and no yep two dollars or 35 dollars or 230 whatever that seems to be pretty average across the board is that two to three dollar to about thirty five dollars interesting fact this is the first appearance of orb that's the villain that has an eyeball for a head you know what i'm talking yeah that that weird looking guy so that's pretty cool next uh i don't know about these i'm not a huge uh mighty morphin power ranger fan so when i saw this i had to look them up and the fact that there was two in there and i know that there is a strong fan base for these and being able to pick them up for a dollar and to get my discount you know, for every five, it cost me a dollar each for each comic versus buying one and spending $2.25. I went ahead and picked these up. Um, one to twelve dollars, but again, I know that there's a loyal fan base for these and throwing these in an auction. Who knows what they'll bring? So that's kind of my eh, taking a shot at something. Next is JLA number one. This is the first appearance of Hyperclan. This also has a cameo appearance of Wolverine and Dr. Doom in it. 
Uh, I know it's right before one of the crossover events. Average pricing is between one to ten dollars, and that seems to be pretty average, plus or minus a buck on the high end. Next is probably the most interesting comic book that most people don't pay attention to. What is the Superman comic book? I know they're not the most highly sought after comic books out there, but this is the first proposal of Clark Kent and Lois Lane in real life. No imaginary, no using it to plot a scheme or anything like that. Legitimate, I'm in love with you, you're in love with me, let's get married. That's not what's interesting about this. Mr. Mixiplex. I always mess that name up. I'm hoping I'm getting it right. Um, this is the first time that's been confirmed that he was Mr. Impossible in the Marvel Universe. He's actually the same character, if you remember Mr. Impossible, that annoying character. I always thought they kind of acted the same, but this is the one that finally connected them together because he basically says it in here. He also drops the hint that he needs to go see his four friends in blue uh, in another universe, which, of course, he's talking about the Fantastic Four in that. That was pretty cool. Again, one of his under-the-table comic books that has a lot of history behind it and a lot of people don't know. And we know they don't know because the pricing for this ranges right around $1 to $5 for something that actually connects the two universes together and a more solid foundation. I don't know. All right, next, you've seen it around. This book was popping when Suicide Squad came out and then we found out how bad the Suicide Squad movie was and it immediately started dropping. Yes, I'm talking about Legends number one. First appearance of Amanda Waller and of course the first appearance of Brimstone. This comic book generally ranges right around two to ten dollars and that seems to be pretty stable on anything I've seen value wise. Other than a little bend in it, slight bend, which a couple of encyclopedias will take care of that and yes, I still have encyclopedias. They're out of date, but I still have them. So, moving on. <laughs> and the next book is uh, Legends number six. Uh, this is the first appearance of Justice League International. Um, yeah, they started doing all that. We actually got some Justice League International in here as well. Uh, but being the first appearance, I figured why not? We'll take a shot on it. Uh, generally, you're ranging $1 to $5 on Key Collector. On other apps, it can go anywhere from 2 to $8, which was kind of weird. Next is Justice League of America. This is the annual number two. This is an interesting book because it's the first team appearance of the Justice League of Detroit, which is Gypsy, Vibe, and Steel. This comic book generally goes from, and this was really weird. Like, this is probably the widest spread I've seen so far. So on Key Collector, it had it for four to forty-five dollars, and on my comic book price guide, it had it two to sixteen dollars. I thought that was a little weird. So we'll throw it out there and we'll see what we do with it. Uh, next is a twofer uh, because <laughs> these are both Justice League of America books, classic classic Copper Age uh, books right here. Uh, this is nothing more than the classic battle of the Justice League of America and the Secret Society of Supervillains in its two-part form. Each one of these goes from on the low end two dollars, on the high end twenty dollars. Well, I don't know. We'll see what people want to spend on it. And next is another Justice League of America but this one is number 171. This is The Death of Mr. Terrific. I know Mr. Terrific. I've seen him in comic books. Is it a big deal or not? I guess you got to be a fan. That's why the pricing is pretty stable around that $1 to $5 range. Next, we get into some DR, some Marvel goodness now. Uh, we're dealing with the Avengers. Uh, this is, and you guessed it, number 263. If you're an X Factor fan, this is the first appearance of them right here, technically in comic books. Uh, first appearance of the entire X Factor, which is nothing more than an X Men League team. So go figure. Uh, next is Avengers number 301. This is the first appearance of Supernova. Um, Gatherin Saul, I think is how you pronounce it. S double A L. That sounds about right. Comment down below. Uh, and it's also the death of Malter as well. This comic book ranges between one to five, depending on where you look. It can also go to 50 cents to eight dollars a pop. Valuations. I only spent a buck on. Uh, next is Avengers. 
317, this is a Spider-Man appearance, and it is the first and only appearance of Barricade. Why is that important? I always liked it when comic books just had somebody, they're there, and then they make them go away, and they don't bring them back. It's just property just laying around out there. I just thought it was interesting. Cool little factor to it. Uh, this is between, uh, let me check my sheet here, one to three bucks, so it's not a huge, huge grabber. Next is Avengers. This is number one. Again, another lie filled one. That's right. It's just lie filled work. I popped it in there. Surprisingly, though, this does have some value to it between the $1 and $10 range. I can't find anything major specific about this book that makes it unique other than it's Rob Liefeld's work. If you know, comment down below. All right, next is Justice League International. I got a couple of these. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Injustice League. So there's your five new appearances right there of each one of the members. It's the first mention of the Injustice League as well. Why not? I'll grab that, especially since they're between $1 to $6 a pop. So let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. And, of course, uh, Justice League International number 24. You've seen this. this. This comic book's been everywhere. The only really specific thing I can find about this book is that it's the first appearance of the Justice League of Europe, I believe. Yes, Justice League of Europe. Um, and there's been some hints that what happens in this book with this particular character here might be significant in the future. I, I don't know. But the truth is, being a first appearance of a team, uh, especially a comic book run that just never goes away, just constantly hangs around. All right, some of these other ones were kind of hit and miss at this point at this list. Uh, Herdebringer, a classic uh, Return of the Dark Knight uh, cover right there. It's an homage cover. Why not? I know it catches people's eyes. I know some people really like this series as well. Uh, this is the first solo one of Faith, too, before her own comic book run as well. Amish cover, uh, one to three bucks. But, like I said, you see it everywhere. Uh, next is Man of Steel Classic, uh, number one. It's a number one issue. It's a classic story. I figured, why not? What does it actually bring in? One to five bucks. Again, taking shots. Uh, this was an interesting find. Uh, Doom Patrol, number 122. Yes, you've seen this cover before. little confusion on this one, though. Some people are saying uh, it's a reprint. Some people aren't. I believe it is a reprint. If my memory serves me correct, and I could be wrong, um, and I didn't have a whole lot of time to look it up, but Duke Patrol first had a 12-cent cover on it, and I know this is a cover with 12 cents on it, so it only makes sense. So it's not the first appearance of this multi-matter uh, type person. I don't know. I figured I'd throw it out there anyway. A reprint. Sometimes you just can't get the originals. Next, G.I. Joe number one. This is from the Dark Horse run, the kind of weird, kind of trying to make everything new run from the 90s, and it just failed horribly. horribly. But cool cover. Like, legitimately, I even I fall victim to buy for the cover, and I probably won't even sell this one. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I'm going to get rid of it. All right, some last-minute ones. And I had copies of these, but again, I'm just loading up for an auction. Uh, Adventure Comics number 478. Nothing overly particular about this other than it being a classic Aquaman story. And this one this one made me mad. I wish I would have looked at this one a little bit more. This is G.I. Joe number 51. First appearance of Road Pig and a couple of other first appearance of the newer members of the Dreadnoughts. But you'll see some kid decide to go on and trace him over it. Oh, I know what it was. It was the first appearance of Xandar, Thunder, Tollbooth, Slasher, and Cross Country. Oh, check my receipts. Comment down below if I'm right. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. But either way, G.I. Joe comic books were great for these types of first appearances. Very rarely did it ever just have like one guy in it. There was always, because they had so many characters to go through. So that's my haul. That's 30 comic books for 30 bucks. How did I do? Comment down below. Also, most of these are probably going to end up in 
one of my online auctions, so definitely as I get things together for that, keep your eyes and ears open. The best way to be able to do that is subscribe. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get the first notification of when everything's up and the auction is running. I do an online auction. Uh, one, because I want it safe, secured, and I want you to pay the price that you want without being pressured. So definitely check that out here in the near future. Don't forget about Blaster Stash at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. We have a great time. Live chat. Uh, we did miss last week uh huey wasn't feeling well hopefully he's feeling better best wishes out to you bud also don't forget we got emerald city comic con coming up yeah we're gonna go out i'm going out to the west coast huey's already out there and we're gonna beep up around we're gonna meet some comic book people we're gonna read some comic book stuff and we'll probably drink some comic book beer all right maybe not comic book board we're definitely gonna drink beer so definitely don't forget to like and subscribe over there as well also our live chat room you can jump right in and agree to disagree or disagree with us either way we'll have a good time all right guys I gotta get out of here I gotta finish up my comic books for my haul in review for this week have a great day bye